This video is going to show you how to run a logistic regression in R. It's a relatively straightforward procedure and if you know how to do a linear regression you should be able to pick this up fairly easily. Just before we start there's a few packages and um, read Excel as usual for reading in our Excel data. JTools package. This is going to give us a nice neat output that gives us a lot of information about our model and we're also going to use tidyverse to allow us to create a confusion matrix which will simply tell us the number of people our model correctly classified. So you only have to install the packages the once. Once you've done that, you only need to pull them out of the library each time you intend to use them. And I'm going to turn off the scientific notation to get some exact p-values as well. So this is the data we're going to read in. So we're going to read in this Excel data set. As usual, this is its location on my computer. Yours is going to be different than that. So we're just going to add that. We'll just quickly view it. So this data set is looking at relapse. And it's looking at relapse in a group of individuals who um, were opiate addicts who have undergone successful inpatient detoxification. And we want to see whether things predict their likelihood of relapse four months later. So we categorize them as having relapsed or not. So one means relapsed, zero means they have not relapsed. Years addicted, this is simply the number of years they've been addicted to opiates. And comorbid drug use, this is if they are addicted to any other drug. If they are, they are classified as one. If they are not, they're classified as zero. So for example, if someone's addicted to heroin and cocaine, they'd get a one. If they were addicted to heroin and also alcohol dependent, they'd get a one. If they're only addicted to opiates, then they get a zero. So this is a categorical variable. So we want to see if these two variables predict this outcome. So we're just going to attach that file. And this is how we write this model up. So we're just going to, I'm going to call it model binary. You can call it anything you like, but this is just the model that I'm going to be creating. And it's a generalized linear model. So it's not a linear model as we previously used before. So you have JLM. Formula is our DV, which is relapse. Then the tilde symbol and then our two IVs or our two predictors, years addicted and comorbid drug use. And then we tell it it's the family's binomial and the link is log it. So this is your sort of S-shaped fit. So we run this and nothing will happen yet. So we ask for our summary of our model binary. And this gives us this output here. I'm going to use another command later on to get more information than this. But from this, we can see the association between our IVs, our predictors, years addicted and comorbid drug use, and our dependent variable of relapse or not. So if we look at years addicted, there's our regression coefficient, it's standard error. There's its z-value, it's critical ratio, and its p-value. So we've got a statistically significant association between years addicted and the likelihood of relapse. See, this is a positive association. We've got a positive regression coefficient. That means the longer people have been addicted to opiates, the more likely they were to relapse. The more likely they were to fall into the category coded as 1 compared to the category coded as 0. Now for comorbid drug use. As you can see, we've got a positive association. There's our regression coefficient, the standard error, and the p-value is a very strong association here. Now, because this is categorical, whether they have comorbid drug use or not, it's a little bit more complicated to interpret, but it's positive. So that means if you fall into the category coded as 1, so the higher group, so in this case, people who did have comorbid drug use, you're more likely to fall into the category coded as 1 in the dependent variable. So those with comorbid drug use were more likely to relapse. If this was negative, that would mean people with comorbid drug use were less likely to relapse. So we can write this up. We'd say something along the lines of there was a significant positive association between years addicted and the likelihood of relapse. Plus our aggression curve in this it's standard error and the p-value. In addition, comorbid drug use was also associated with an increased likelihood of relapse. And again, regression coefficient standard error and its p-value. Okay, that's 
some information, but we haven't got any more fit information. We haven't got our odds ratios or confidence intervals either. This is where this command that comes from our JTools package is really useful. It gives us a nice, neat output. So you ask for some model binary x equals true. That just means you're going to get odds ratios and exponentialized regression coefficients. So we run that, and it gives us this output here. So first of all, we'll just interpret the model fit. So here's our chi-squared test. Chi-squared statistic and the p-value. It only gives it to two decimal places here. I'll come on to If you want to show that to more decimal places, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But as you can see, our, we've got a statistically significant model. And we can just report that along with the chi-squared, its degrees of freedom and the p-value. We could also report our pseudo r-squared, our McFadden r-squared, which is 0.1. 7. The IC and the BIC, we can't use them in isolation, they're for model comparisons. This actually has given us this little bit of extra info as well. Xest is our exponentialized estimates, regression coefficients. So these are now odds ratios. So that is the odds ratio for the influence of years addicted on the likelihood of relapse in our sample. And that is the odds ratio for comorbid drug use. As well as getting the odds ratios, we get our competence intervals as well. And the p-values. These are going to be the same p-values as before. And you'll see they are the same set statistics. So we don't need to worry about that or the p-values. But we can report our odds ratios following where we write up our regression coefficients. So for years addicted, we can just add our odds ratio equals 1.34 and then we'd also report our confidence intervals with that as well. You can see we've got a much larger odds ratio for commodity drug use. We can also see we've got much wider confidence intervals for that as well. So that is almost a complete write-up and just a couple of other things briefly to show you. As I say, it does everything to two decimal places here. If you want to get this p-value to three or more decimal places, what we can do is we could just ask for p for the chi-squared, and we can just put in what our chi-squared is, what our degrees of freedom is, into this command. So we just take our 25.37 degrees of freedom two, we run that, and there we go, that gives us our exact p-value. So we can report that as p less than 0.001. And the final thing we can do is you can also get a correct classification rate. So this is the number of people that your model correctly classifies as whether they've relapsed or not. So this command here does that. And you can use this command pretty fixed as it is. We just remember so this is our model, the binary model that we created. So we fit that in there. And we've got our confusion matrix and we're using our log reg data, so that's just the data set that we've been operating on throughout and we're predicting relapse so if you run that there we go that is our percentage of people correctly classified, so about 75% and here is the confusion matrix itself, basically these are correct classifications predicted to zero and you got zero and there's the other one, predicted one, got one. So, out of the people who didn't relapse, we got 40 of them correct. Of those who did relapse, 43 correct. However, 12 people we predicted wouldn't relapse, relapsed. And 15 people we predicted would relapse, didn't relapse. So, if you add all those numbers up, that's your full sample size. And the ones we got right are 75% of that sample. So we could also add to our write-up that we correctly predicted 75% of cases as well if we wanted to. And that in sums how to do a logistic regression in R.